Hello everyone and welcome to the contemporary world subject. So we are here in a challenging time. Uh, the pandemic has changed the entire world. The way we live, the way we deal with people, the way we view things, the way we transact. The people have become um, glued to their computers because of the online classes. The world has tremendously changed because of this pandemic. Yet, when we talk about the contemporary world, we always look at things at a positive side. Despite this pandemic, you will also see that there are good things that happened in the past few months. Um, countries have grown closer together, trying to beat the odds in terms of economic survival. People have become more thrifty because you know the there is there is instability of income children have become or they may be affected by the current pandemic in terms of their education but they have also struggled much in order for them to continue the education um there is a dominant effect Yet, we still continue to strive, we still continue to, to struggle together, we can do this one, together we heal as one according to the messaging of our country, our government now. And of course, we have to continue with life, despite the fact that we are challenged by these unprecedented times. So again, um, this subject will talk about one thing and one thing only. And this will be the topic for the entire semester. Yes, you're right. We are going to talk about globalization. And uh, upon reading your answers, globalization has different meanings to different people. It can be different from a political point of view. It can be different from the economist point of view. So as students of contemporary world, we are going to view the term, the... Um, the meaning of the word based on our subjects uh, we call this interdisciplinary approach so we will look at we will look at the word globalization from the point of view of history politics um, economics and other subjects so i hope you look at globalization as 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 a positive thing but of course, um, globalization has been around for several years. People said that it, it can be traced back to the Silk Road where um, the, the land routes were connecting East Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, there was a lucrative trade in silk carried along the, the place in, in, in Southeast Asia beginning in Han Dynasty in China uh, that was around 2007 uh, before common e before common era or BCE and uh, people were already trading trading because there was an overflow of goods and in order for you to to make money then you have to trade with other people and other and other places but when you go to other places or other countries, this country will impose what you call tariff. Tariff can be a tax that is imposed on goods. Why do they impose? Of course, they want to protect also their own products. Because if imported from other countries flow into your uh, country, that could also affect the producers or the local producers. So by... by Putting a safeguard like tariff, T-A-R-I-F-F, -F, you, you will control the uh, inflow of goods that may affect the producers uh, who, are, who are earning locally. But um, people would say that the Silk Road in China was not actually the first taste of globalization. You might be surprised that the globalization really started in the Philippines. 
You may be asking, what part? Of course, the galleon trade. The galleon trade was the route which was used by the Spanish conqueror Miguel Lopez de Legazpi when he came to the Philippines in 1565. This was the, the route back to Acapulco, Mexico. Uh, there are only two galleons that were used from Acapulco to Manila with some 500,000 pesos worth of goods. So these goods carry goods from China and other, and other um, goods that are produced in Asia and it is dropped in Mexico and it is given to Cuba and from Cuba they will also go to the United States. So there, the world became smaller with globalization because there was ready trading, not just uh, not just country to country, but almost internationally. Um, the Acapulco or the, the, the Galleon trade was actually spending 120 days at the, at the sea. And then it goes back and forth to Manila, to Acapulco, Mexico. That is the reason why the Spanish colonization that began in 1565 and ended in 333 uh, uh, that lasted 333 years. Um, they, the, the Spanish conquerors, the colonization of Spain in the country did not really uh, exploited or did not really exploit our 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 human resources, the natural resources. Sorry, not human resources, but the natural resources. You know why? Because they were very busy with the galleon trade, which was doing well during the time. And everything that that galleon trade is earning, it will go back to the Spain. That is how it worked before. So when you go back to globalization, that was long, long time ago. The galleon trade is actually the first example of what globalization is, which we're, which we're going to talk more in the next uh, slide. So I was saying we need to define globalization because we need to have a common understanding of what it is. Of course, um, if you're familiar with Ford, Ford has what you call the Lehman car or the Lyman car. The car is designed in Germany. The gearing system is produced in South Korea, but the pump is produced in the United States. The engine is in Australia. See the point? One car, but it is outsourced in different countries. It is exactly the technological advancement that made this type of global production possible. And I think it's one of the positive things that globalization has given us. You know why? Because it can it can give it can provide job opportunities to people. And people who are in the underdeveloped or developing countries, we don't call them underdeveloped countries, developing countries like Vietnam, like Philippines, like Cambodia, we are what you call developing countries. So for the sake of our uh, discussion, we are going to define globalization from the book written by Manfred Steger. He said, that the globalization is the expansion and intensification of social relations and consciousness across world time and across world space. Let me repeat that because I want you to memorize the definition in the entire semester. I don't care whether you understood this subject as long as you understood that you are in the world where globalization, globalization is happening. And I want you to look at globalization as a positive view. Globalization, according to Steger, is defined as the expansion and intensification of social relations and consciousness across world time and across world space. Steger's definition um, defined it as an exp expansion of social relations. By expansion, he means that both the creation of new social networks and the multiplication of existing connections cutting across traditional, political, economic, cultural, and geographic boundaries. There is an expansion 
of consciousness of people. Uh, if you are new to a country, like you are migrating, somehow you get the idea that the country that you are that that you now uh, that that you go to has different tradition, has different political structure, has a different economic activity. Then you try to blend with that. You expand your idea that the world does not revolve around you, but the world is really big out there. That is what we meant by expansion. That we expand the social relations and our consciousness. The Philippines cannot live on its own. I'm sure you, you do understand. Although we are agricultural country supposedly, but we had a lot of imports. We import rice, we import spices. I think we can produce them, but somehow because we never gave support to our local producers, our local producers are affected by imports as well because of zero tariff or low tariff. Um, slowly we have become very dependent on on the products that are that are that came to the country so we are more of the consumer instead of a producer which also is not good um expansion could also be about social media the social media has established a new global connections between people expansion because ngos world ngos are are, are are giving networks or are, are establishing networks from different corners of the globe. What do we mean by intensification? Intensification refers to the expansion, stretching, and acceleration of these networks. So, mas gipalapad, expansion. Intensification, mas gipaligon. That's, what, that's how we're going to understand that. Uh, between New York and London, there has always been a strong financial market connecting them. So with electronic trading came the volume of trade which increased exponentially now that we are connected and being wired. So of course the connection gets increasing, the speed gets, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, in a, it's on its full speed. So the, the transaction has become intensified. Why? Because there, there was a there was a closely knit and the reach that the world has become smaller because of technology. That's, a, that's example that's an example of, of uh, intensification. Of course, the final attribute of our meaning is that it relates to the way people perceived time and space. Um, we don't we don't look at globalization already as something that is bound by time and space. You are you are uh, you may be sleeping now, but the rest of the world is still awake, and people like call center agents are are have have changed um, have changed the the way we deal with business. Some people are are staying late at late at night because they have to do some transactions because their clients are abroad and their clients are are have different time uh, time zones so the time and space boundaries have already been have already been gone it has been transcended it has been uh, uh, people People do not mind the time and space that we have, especially that we are interconnected. So again, our definition has to be, has to, you have to remind yourself that our definition is based on a positive point of view at the same time interdisciplinary approach. Uh, we're going to talk about each of these um, exhaustively in the next uh, sessions. Now let's look at the first type or the first aspect. Um, there was an article written by Gao Shang Kuan. Uh, the title is Economic Globalization, Trends, Risks, and Risk Prevention. It was uh, 
produced by uh, Economic and Social Affairs under WTO. And um, he has a very good definition of economic globalization. And according to him, it's an irreversible trend. Uh, when you say irreversible, uh, it has to continue. You cannot uh, reshape it. It's it's bound to happen. It's bound to increase. It's bound to to change the way we deal uh, in terms of uh, economic relations. He said that globalization, economic globalization particularly, refers to the increasing interdependence of world economies as a result of the growing scale of cross-border trade of commodities and services, flow of international capital, and wide and rapid spread of technologies. Take note that economic globalization is driven by rapid spread of technology. I hope you can explain that. Cross-border trade of commodities. So how come China made products are here? It's a cross-border trade of commodities. Are they allowed to tr are they allowed to to trade with us? Of course, yes. Flow of international capital. Can China invest in our country? Yes. Can they own all of the major corporations? No. Can they own mass media? No, that is why that, that was an issue of ABS-CBN because mass media should not be owned by foreigners. But in some areas of the businesses, it can be 60-40. 60 owned by the foreigner, 40 owned... Sorry, 60% should be owned by Filipino and 40% will be owned by foreigners. Can a foreigner buy lands here and properties? Of course not. See the point? There are still controls within economic globalization and yes it is um it is uh, uh it is a result of a rapid technology the the, the continuing expansion and market integration has made the trend irreversible and uh, the advancement of science and technology has also reduced the cost of transportation and communication so these are the two that are that are really affected in terms of economic globalization because of technology transportation and communication have really put up the speed okay so that is for the definition of uh, economic globalization now let's look at political globalization the political globalization can be defined as follows uh, it refers to the growth of the worldwide political system, both in size and complexity. The system includes three, national government, governmental organization, and intergovernmental organization. Um, the creation of the United Nations of 263 countries, please check my number, is called one of the classic examples of political globalization. And uh, the political globalization has expanded and it has helped a lot of, of countries, especially international non-governmental organizations, in terms of uh, coming up with a global political system which has, not been, which has not been realized until now. And it may have different people may have different view because of the tension between between countries but the but the the, the plane in globalization has has done good things more than bad especially with united nations and the aim of the united nations was was to prevent prevent war uh number 2 it can help in terms of social um social uh social uh, relations uh international peace and security that, that's another one uh international cooperation and harmonizing the actions of nations 
So they are like the safeguard. Unfortunately, these are the superpowers of the world, like Russia and the United States. Okay, so although this United Nation has a lot of um, principal organs, uh, there are six principal organs, including uh, the World Bank and including the most important organization that we have right now, the, the World Health Organization, uh, which has helped us survive the pandemic. So there you go, uh, political globalization. Next, we have the environmental globalization. The environmental glo globalization refers to the internationally coordinated practices and regulations, often in the form of international treaties. Treaties are agreements regarding environmental protection. Well, environmental globalization is supported by NGOs and governments of developed countries, although some, some countries would oppose to that. But there are good things about environmental globalization. You have Kyoto Protocol uh, and uh, the Montreal Protocol. Uh, protocol, when you say protocol, these are agreements. The Montreal Protocol, or let's say the, the Kyoto Protocol, Kyoto is in Tokyo because the, the, the agreement was done in Tokyo. Uh, it, 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 it was an agreement to to commit all members of the United Nations to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas, you know what greenhouse gases are. And uh, it's an agreement that would, that would even penalize some countries that produce greenhouse gas affecting the underdeveloped countries like, or less de developing countries like, like the Philippines. Another protocol, which is the most successful one, uh, I want you to research on this, is the Montreal Protocol. Montreal is a, is a protocol or is an agreement that was established in 1987 to protect the ozone layer. So the, it's an international treaty to protect the ozone layer, to phase out the production of CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, and other numerous substances that are responsible for ozone depletion. Why is it the most successful? Because they were able to remove CFCs and they were able to prove with, 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 this, with this treaty that ozone layer has healed. So it's a good thing that everyone was was helping, everyone is signing up in order to protect the environment. Okay? Of course, the last one is your cultural globalization. Uh, cultural globalization could refer to the transmission of ideas, meanings, and values around the world in such a way, in such a way that uh, it will extend and intensify social relations. Um, I don't know if many of you are followers of Korean... Um, or K-pop or Korean novels or how do you say that? Korean series, right? Uh, Crash Landing on You on Netflix and um, I, I, I heard there was a good series about virus. It's called the, it's, it's, I don't know if it's Kingdom or The Kingdom but it was Korean and uh, if you notice people, Filipinos like to imitate culture it is actually the product of cultural globalization. Uh, American US, US series have tremendously changed the landscape of mass media. We have accepted women who are empowered. We have accepted um, people of different cultural background because of our exposure to mass media. It has um, somehow it has somehow it, it has somehow diffused because of of internet popular 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 culture media and of course international travel so the common consumption of this culture has allowed people to adapt adapt uh, let me clarify a d a p t adapt to the culture and what is culture culture is simply defined as the way of life uh, you may not be agreeing with the culture, but 
if you're respecting differences, diversity. I think that's enough. And you have to go back to, to our roots as Filipinos. Keep the culture that works for us. Humano po, um, being uh, respectful, uh, although culturally, Cebuanos do not use po and opo, but the tone of the voice should always be respectful. So I think um, with the ever-changing landscape of globalization, especially cultural, we should not forget who we are. We should not forget our, our uh, culture itself because it gives us identity. It is something that you will pass on to the next generation as part of your tradition. Um, your family has culture. Your family has tradition. If you will have your own family in the future, you will always keep the good things that you have assimilated, that you have practiced. So that's it. Um, somehow globalization has changed the mindset of young Filipinos that anything from the from U.S. or from from Korea is good. This is what you call colonial mentality. You view our culture as inferior, inferior to the culture of others, which is exactly a negative aspect of cultural globalization. Um, you watch English movies compared to Tagalog movies. Well, I can't blame you because Tagalog movies are badoy, but somehow a Filipino movie would depict our culture, would depict who we are. And let's not forget about that. Because once a person loses his identity, loses his culture, um, he will get lost in the process of finding himself. Okay? So that's uh, just a summary of the uh, aspects of culture, or aspects of globalization.